It's quality. That is the best Fujo fish ball I've ever had. One of the most interesting things about these uh, series, Andrew, what are you actually eating? Sometimes we don't actually know what we're eating. David, I would have not thought that we would have walked into a Fujinese restaurant and ordered the braised frog and been like, Woo! This is fire. In this episode, we delve into the province of Fujian. Most Fujianese immigrants in America settled in the Northeast, mostly New York City. Fujianese food is defined by the two big cities, Fuzhou and Xiamen. The two cities traditionally speak different dialects, Fujianese and Hokkien. With Fujian's large coastline and mountains, it means you'll see lots of seafood and some mountainous agriculture, like a mixture of mushrooms and even rabbit. We start off on East Broadway in Chinatown, which is known as Little Fuzhou. Hey you guys, thank you so much for clicking on that video. Real quick, here's a word from our sponsor, Keeps. Statistically speaking, two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments that stop hair loss and promote hair growth. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Each treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can connect with your prescribing doctor about anything, anytime. That's 24 seven care and support you can trust. Nowadays, there are so many different methods for you to get your hair back, but I think Keeps is the absolutely the best one because it is the most convenient, it is the most affordable, and guess what? You don't even have to leave your door. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash phone bros or click in the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash phone bros. Behind us, Young Sun is actually the most well-known sit-down family-style Fujinese restaurant that even some non-Fujinese people would go to. Today, we're about to jump into some deeper cut dishes because this is one of the most well-known sit-down family restaurants. All right, everybody, we're here at Young Sun. All the food has come out. We got a, a Fujo lunch feast right here. Um, I would say these dishes probably would, David, make for really good, like regular dinners or really good lunch food. Lychee pork, lychee roll. Sweet, tomato-y, kind of has a light glaze. I would say this, you could say this is one of the predecessors of sweet and sour pork. All right, David, this next dish we got to try is the red braised rabbit um, fun soup. David, I'm not gonna lie, this soup looks pretty interesting. At first, I thought it was like maybe blood, but it's actually just red braised wine soup. I know that rabbit meat, I think at most restaurants is a little bit weird, but actually some specialty European restaurants and even Japanese spots do serve rabbit meat. So it's not the weirdest thing to find. Wine braised rabbit, pulls out. I'm not gonna lie, I never thought I would say that phrase on this channel. It's a little bit salty and sour. Not as weird as you think. All right, here we have the mini one tons, Fujinese style. Guys, it's just a little pinch of meat and a big long cape. Fujinese one tons. Previous to this, I had only had the super cheap fast food version. This is my first time having the restaurant tier version. Wow. All right, so comparing it to the Cantonese one ton, uh, Cantonese one ton soup is gonna have a little bit more of that dried shrimp flavor and a little bit more of that fermented fish sauce in it, while this one actually is more lighter and just straight fish flavor. Andrew, I'm a huge ban mian guy. They call it bo mian in uh, Fujinese, I believe. Um, and, and you also have some just uh, sweet and sour pork spare ribs. Go in. Mm. I think oh, this wow. is the number one Fujinese dish to start with if you're like new to the cuisine. Dude, these are two right here. These are hitting. Wow. I think for sure, you know, the wine braised rabbit, that's gonna be a very polarizing dish. But there's no polarization here, guys. Mm. Just how good do you think it is? Good or great? Andrew, I'm looking at the clam fun si and egg. This dish I've never had before, but it doesn't look too crazy. It looks almost like something you would make at home if you were seaside, beachside. Um, like we said, Fujian, a lot of coast. All right, I'm gonna be going with this dish right here. It's kind of like a rice flakes that are cooked. So it kind of looks like chopped up hall fun or he fun. Let's try it. You guys, the best way I can describe this right now is umami. This is like clam chowder without the cream. This wow. is super creamy. I think the eggs add another umami flavor to it, but like you said, very light. You totally could add vinegar to it if you wanted. This food is really like a mixture of some mountainous mushrooms, which are kind of like uh, your wood ear mushrooms mixed in with also your seafood flavor. So it's very light and herbaceous. All right, you guys, they gave us this New Year's dish, Andrew. This is their version of Ba Bao Fan. 
Now, every province does it differently. Um, they have their own version here with more peanuts, raisins, and almost, uh, I want to say, some colored coconut on top. This is the Fujianese Baba Fan for Qingyan. Happy Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, guys. Savory, lightly sweet, a little oily. Got the little raisin on top. I like it. All right, you guys. We just had a Fujianese feast here at Young Sun. Like I said, this is my first time having some of these dishes at a more elevated restaurant level and outside of a fast food setting. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the clam fun si as my favorite. Ooh, that was good. Because this really captured the ocean in the best way possible. And I actually really like their version of eight treasure rice. It almost made the carb taste like a protein, weirdly enough. Also here, these uh, pork ribs with taro. This was a fire dish. To be quite frank, Fujianese isn't the most popular style of Chinese food outside of the Fujianese community. But honestly, I think it's a little underrated. After all, it is still considered one of the eight great cuisines of China. See, one of my new favorites is Fuzhou balls, AKA FJ balls. It refers to the fish ball with marinated pork in the middle. But there's also other kinds of FJ balls that have a chewy potato mochi-like outer with meat inside, and those are really good. Guys, we're here at Shumei Cafe and I'm trying yeah, yeah, Ming. I butchered that name, but this is not a type of dish that you're gonna find a lot at Chinese restaurants. I mean, I definitely see the clear potato starch noodles, but this whole combination of seafood and uh, celery and cabbage, very rare. It's actually not bad. Broth is really light, pork flavor, nothing too funky. I would say it almost smells funkier than it tastes. So I want to make a quick distinction that a lot of the food we're eating in this video is from Fuzhou, which is, yes, the biggest city in Fujian, but however, uh, one of the other bigger cities that you might have heard of, Xiamen, uh, is a city that more exported a lot of the culture to Taiwan. So a lot of the Taiwanese food and Xiamen food are going to be similar. However, Fuzhou food is going to be a little bit different, thus being why you may have not seen dishes like this before, unless you ate at Fuzhou restaurants going up. Here I have one of your classic Fuzhou fish balls. It has fish on the outside, pork on the inside. It's actually, not gonna lie, kind of like the fish ball version of a Shaolong Bao. Guys, Shumei is actually very high quality. It's very clean back here, and uh, the people are very, very nice. Mm. I can tell why they let me back there to film, because it's quality. That is the best Fuzhou fish ball I've ever had. This is a kind of starch and fried fish stomach soup. Kind of like one of those dishes that you made out of the leftovers from the fish that you had. Fuzhou as a city was not the nicest city for a long time. Obviously it's improving over the past couple decades. But for a while, you know, I mean, people are just eating dishes like this out of situation and that's what it is. Pretty fishy, uh, does kind of give you some of that like kind of sardine feeling. Not a, not a bad soup, but definitely not my favorite. But I do appreciate that I think it was fried and then thrown in the soup. When eating at a Fujianese restaurant, you know you gotta try. Bon Mian, peanut noodles. I saw the tub of peanut butter back there. It looked like more straight peanut butter, so maybe this is a little bit sweeter. It is funny how ubiquitous the sriracha rooster sauce is. This is actually made and started in LA, 626. I thought I'd never say this, but my favorite thing here at Shumei is the Fujianese fish balls with the meat inside. This was the best one. The meat was fresh. They were fresh, freshly wrapped. You saw the lady back there doing it. Quality. One of the reasons that a lot of people do not know about Fujianese cuisine is because most of the spots are very sort of like internal for the community, by the community, such as this spot right here. There's no English sign. Okay, this is a duck taro rice noodle soup. Wow. One of the most interesting things about this uh, series, Andrew, what are you actually eating? Sometimes we don't actually know what we're eating. Uh, this is the mi xian, you know, the kind of chewy, stretchy rice noodles that you see everywhere nowadays. Like we said, guys, the Malaysian bakate is Fujianese in origin. What we're looking at here, Andrew, is a dish that we saw inside of a baozi at Fuzhou Weizong Bao. But this is actually a bamboo wine braised pork dish. This is a common theme amongst Fujianese food, just like celery in the soup. Oh, is. but I would say, Andrew, specifically of the Fuzhou subgenre. Right. Fuzhou food. This is wine braised bamboo pork. Uh, not super sweet, but a little bit sweet. Honestly, it's an easy to eat dish. No, this was not bad. I am enjoying my meal so far here at Happy Palace. This is Huangman yellow braised frog meat. 
Yeah, man. So I was looking at this dish earlier, and I was like, David, there's nothing special about this. What is this yellow braised thing with taro? This is frog meat. I know that frog is totally legal to eat. Plenty of people eat it. French people eat it. French people eat it. All types of people eat it. But it's not a dish that I usually go for. So, Huangmen Tianji. Tianji. Ribbit. Frog takes the closest to chicken out of anything you ever had in your life. David, I would have not thought that we would have walked into a Fujinese restaurant and ordered the braised frog and been like, Woo! This is fire. Andrew, we are looking at some Fuzo razor clams. Now, um, they actually have a ton of really expensive Fujinese seafood dishes. We could not get to all of them. I mean, we're talking about Andrew. They go into the hundreds of dollars. But we wanted to get something absolutely delicious. And um, Fujian is famous for razor clams. Oh yeah, that's a five out of five. All right, you guys, we are in a basement at the East Broadway Mall at Fuzhou Weizong Bao. Basically, they are famous here for serving the Fuzhou Shaolong Bao. This actually reminds me of the Manto style of Shaolong Bao. Let's bite into it. Let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You guys, this meat is like extra, extra soy flavored in terms of the, the soy sauce, salty vibe. Very, very strong, but very, very good. This is one of the best bouts I've ever had. You guys, it's way better fresh. Come and get them. It's almost like braised bamboo. They treated it the exact same way as they did the pork. And um, this is really interesting. I've actually never had this before. This is a Fuzo bamboo cake. This is the, honestly the first and only bamboo bao I've ever had. I think that, you know, they had what they had around and this is actually pretty good. Here we have an irregular beef ball, but this is something that actually uh, Fujinese also do with fish cake is they just kind of squeeze it in their hands. They don't really try to make it like a spherical shape, try to take your time. They're just trying to give you the food. And I totally understand, you know, the shape should not really affect the taste, although it does affect the look. Very peppery beef balls. Those are kind of good. I know they look kind of weird, but it tastes very good. Fujian is really known for their dumplings, which is rare because mostly when you think of people who eat a lot of dumplings, you're thinking of like Northern China, Shandong, Dongdae people, Beijing people. I can't say for sure, but I can just say that these remind me a lot more of gyozas than the Northern dumplings do. Yo, this fried Fujianese dumpling reminds me the most of a Japanese gyoza out of all the dumplings in China. And does it make sense that the Japanese got the fried gyoza from Fuzhou? It actually does. All right, you guys, you know that we had to include Shuzhou Fuzhou cuisine as quite possibly, Andrew, the most mainstream multi-racial Fujianese spot. I would say there's even a chance that you're gonna see more non-Asians than Asians here. All right, Andrew, leading off, I have the yu gu tou tang, which is just a fish bone soup. Here I have the beef tripe uh, rice noodle soup. It has very thin vermicelli, all these different beef tripes here. You can see the stomach, uh, the little tripe, and then the bigger tripe here. Let's go in on Dude. it. Andrew, these fish bones, got, uh, let me tell you this, guys. These fish bones have a lot of flavor. Mm. For what looks to be a very unappealing dish, the flavor is pretty solid and easy to eat. Of course, you guys, the classic dumplings here at Shujiao, you see everybody getting them from all creeds and backgrounds. This is pork and chive. And, and Andrew, you have chicken and mushroom. This chicken and mushroom dumpling is a must get. This is a five out of five. This is my favorite chicken mushroom dumpling in all of Chinatown. And it's super cheap, 10 of them for like $4. That's gonna be called pork ball soup, which is a large pork kind of Fujinese one ton, less of having the wrapping tail. And then here we have the FJ ball, AKA the Fujinese fish ball. Guys, I'm smelling that celery coming from the soup. So that is a trait of Fujinese food. Okay. Andrew, if I had to analyze the Fujinese dialect, it kind of reminds me of a mixture of Mandarin, Cantonese with a crazy twang on it. Yo, these are really good. Straight up guys, I can see why Xu Jiao is the most popular Fujinese spot in America. These large one tons are really good. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a five out of five. Like we said, guys, it's all about the balls. We got uh, small one tons, Andrew, that almost resemble the goldfish, which, you know, we've had at other spots. You can just slurp them up. They're very silky here. And this is actually rice wrapped in a rice mochi wrapping. They have other ones that are made out of potato and rice. Mm. So let's check this one out. Andrew, these are really good. They actually taste like tang yuan, but with meat in the middle. 
Wow, this is an underrated dish. I would say you definitely got to try this. It's really soft, chewy, uh, melty, kind of mochi texture on the and outside. You know what it is, man? The meat in the middle, Andrew, it kind of has a nice, sweet umami flavor that almost reminds me of the filling from Fuzhou Wei Zongbao. I think it's really respectable to Fujianese people and all other Chinese people, but honestly, it's got dishes that really hit um, for everybody. Yeah. And these are the dishes that we're looking at, guys. I think everybody here, they get the dumplings and the banh mian. Okay, you have to remember that these are wheat noodles, not necessarily egg noodles. Is there some egg inside? Possibly, but this is mostly wheat. You know, I know that across America, Fujianese people are well known to open up buffets and all different types of food restaurants, not necessarily just Chinese. And, and usually, you know, not always Fujianese food, but I think Shu Jiao really goes to show you that Fujianese food, when it can really appeal to everybody. So while we were in Flushing, we stumbled across the only Wenzhou restaurant I had ever seen. It's hard to find this food because Wenzhou people are more known for doing good business rather than opening restaurants. Wenzhou is actually a city in the southern part of the Zhejiang province, which is four hours away from Fuzhou. Now, their food is kind of like if you blended Shanghainese food and Fuzhou dishes. So since we stumbled across it, Listen, we just had to throw it in the video and just acknowledge it because honestly, a couple of the dishes were really good. All right, you guys, we came all the way to Flushing to Huang Jinjiao right now. This is one of the only Wenzhou Nese cuisine spots in the entire city. I'm talking about Queens, Manhattan, Wenzhou cuisine. Now, Wenzhou is technically part of Zhejiang province, which would theoretically have put it in our Shanghainese video, but due to its location, it sort of splits the difference between Fujian in Zhejiang, so it's sort of a hybrid cuisine. Now, if you are not like really in the Chinese world, you probably have never heard of Wenzhou people, but they are considered the best businessmen in China. This is a crackling piece of uh, pork belly uh, cut very thinly. I've never actually had anything quite like this before. Maybe something Taiwanese would be similar. I'm not sure. This is the Wenzhou knees chicharron. This is the closest thing to a Chinese chicharron I've ever had. I think on top of noodles, on top of rice, it could go good. This is their Tangsu Pai Gu from Wenzhou. Um, you know, cut up a little bit smaller than your typical, you know, vinegar, sweet pork ribs. Sweet vinegar, that's the best way to describe it. Very sweet vinegar. Here I have the Wenzhou Nis Ma You Ji, which is the sesame oil chicken. It's, this looks like a roast duck. Um, it's very dark, looks very sweet. Let's test it out, man. Mm, sticky, a little bit sweet. Not the barbecue flavor that you would think. I'm starting to get this kind of dark soy sauce slash sesame oil vibe. Really light in flavor, pretty good though. Guys, I have the hot food, I'm very excited. We got the Wenzhou Nis Ban Mian. We have this uh, Wenzhou Nis pickled vegetable Chung Yao Bing pancake. Oh my gosh, that's steaming, that's fresh. And then you have your classic, very famous Wenzhou Nis hand clamped fish ball soup. This pancake right here looks very, very unique. These two other dishes are gonna look like their version of dishes that we've seen before from Fujian. Obviously not saying that only Fujianese people eat that, but that's the reference point. Google Wenzhounese cuisine, you will see this dish pop up a lot. It's this fish paste that is clamped between the hands, so it's almost in a shape of a noodle, something easier to pick up than a ball. Honestly, for ergonomic reasons, I get it. This dish mm. does not look very good. Kind of ugly, but taste is good. Fish paste is there, lots of cilantro and a lot of herbal green, you know, scallion flavor in it. Honestly, it's really not a bad dish. I could see somebody eating this for lunch. It's just gonna power them through the day. So here's your pickled vegetable pancake. It has a little bit of meat inside. I kind of like it. You know, there is definitely a slight sourness to these last two dishes, but overall, this is a pretty good eat. It tastes lean, tastes light, great for a snack. Again, great for lunch. All right, you guys, let's take a look at this Wenzo Ban Mian. I see a meat sort of sauce on the top, a lot more vinegar, uh, obviously probably coming more from the Zhejiang, you know, Jiangsu, Shanghai Nis side. Wenzo Ban Mian. Much more vinegar vibe and less peanut vibe. Okay, so Wenzo Nis food, between Fujianese and Shanghai Nis food, which one do I think it's closer to? It's really, really close. I think that this food visually looks much more like Fujianese food, but flavor profile-wise, using some of the light vinegar flavors and the sweetness, I would say more Zhejiang. I think it's so tough to call it. Uh, I'm just gonna go 51-49 Shanghainese. It's more similar. All right, you guys, we are here at Super Taste with Chad, the owner of Nori Tai. 
you are Taiwanese. Yes, And you I were am. saying that the, this Fujianese food reminds you a lot of Taiwan. Yeah, especially, you know, this uh, Xiaomin food, when I first moved here from LA, they had not so much Korean men places. This place was the closest to like Taiwanese food that I ever had in New York back then. Yo, Chad, you're gonna get the Luo Fan? No, I had that yesterday. I got the Neuro Men today. Oh, <laughs> so Taiwanese! Yo, you love this. <laughs> this is the Gua Bao. You know, it's the pork belly bao. It's kind of like the Taiwanese Chinese taco. Eddie Huang made it famous. However, the roots actually come from Quanzhou, which is a city that's right above Xiamen, which obviously does have a lot of influence with Taiwan because it's straight across the water. I expect this to be a little bit sweet and very, very savory. This is a very traditional dish, but at this point, probably mm. more like westernized people really are drawn to the flavors of this. But honestly, I don't know why more spots don't serve it. I don't think it's a lot of work. I have a special lamb noodle, Fujianese style, but I do want to note because, you know, you wouldn't usually think of Fujian as eating a lot of lamb, but that's because this particular dish is their Fujianese take on a lanzo la mian. Sometimes when Fujianese people cook another provinces of food, it may not taste exactly traditional like it's from that province, but it might even be more mainstream in the flavors, meaning that it's kind of toned down. So there's a spot called Spicy Village that is Henan food, but it's owned by Fujianese people. Now, I don't think a lot of New Yorkers would have ever gone to a Henan restaurant or because there's not even that many, um, but they have the opportunity because Fujianese people are cooking it. And maybe the flavors are a little bit toned down, but maybe that's better for, you know, the mass audience. As someone who didn't grow up with a lot of exposure to Fujianese food, it's a cuisine that you really need to dive into to understand. It's more than just sesame noodles and fish balls. Fujianese people also have a huge diaspora. For several generations and hundreds of years, they've immigrated to places like Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia also leaving their mark on the food in those countries too. So you let me know in the comments down below what you think about Fujianese food. Hit that like button and please look out for the next episode.